iFootage recently released four LED lights that they are touting as extremely color accurate. They're not even known for being in the light space. So I want to answer two major questions. If it's so accurate, what does it actually look like for videographers? And two, how does it compare against Godox and Aperture who have been in this space for quite a while? Welcome back everybody to London Read Filmmaker here, where I try to condense all the main info you need to know in a small video so you can get on your way. So the first question is, how accurate is this really? Now, I don't actually have access to a spectrometer, but Gerald Undone has, please watch his video, it's extremely informative. Basically what he found was that the SSI score is extremely close to sunlight scoring at over 80. When we take a look at other very popular daylight LEDs, they score around low 70s. So if it's so color accurate, what does it actually look like to a videographer? So here I am shooting 10 bit, I'm shooting log, I'm getting as much color information as possible. And here is what they all look like with a custom white balance to make sure we are on the same level. For my practical tests, I am wearing a solid red colored shirt as I feel this should give us an idea of the differences between the other brands that have a very big blue spike. And to the naked eye, you're probably actually not going to see much of a difference, but there is a hint of a difference in terms of how saturated my red shirt is on the eye footage test, as well as the color of my face. But for all intents and purposes, if you show this to any regular person, they're not going to see the difference. The second question is, how does it compare against the competitors like Godox and Aperture? When it comes to the output, I found that the output range for their 60 watt, 200 watt, and 300 watt is exactly where it needs to be. So we're good there. When it comes to pricing, the 60 watt is probably their most accessorized version. It allows you to either use a Bowens mount adapter should you want to use it with a full Bowens mount softbox. And it also has a V mount battery handle that allows you to battery power it. Now the 60 watt on the back does have a little power delivery USB-C port. So if you have a power delivery bank that's capable of shooting out 100 watts, you can actually power the light that way instead. Now the 200 watt and 300 watt is the only lights that do not have any sort of battery options. And just as such, iFootage made sure there was a nice good discount for that missing feature. If you're comparing it against Godox or Aperture, you're basically saving yourself anywhere from like 300 to $400, which is great. Now Godox does offer some lights in this range that do not have battery power options either. And where the iFootage is going to excel is the fact that they actually give you a control box, whereas Godox is not gonna give you any sort of control box at all. So if your lights are gonna be up on a high stand, the iFootage is gonna definitely work better. And of course, like all the other lights these days, there is a smartphone app, so you're gonna be able to control it if it's really out of range. With those two major questions answered, here are some additional information that I think might be helpful just for you to know so you can decide which light is best for you. When it comes to similarities between all these three cobs, they of course give you some nice strobe special effects that are pretty standard these days. And of course there is some fan modes that you can do to basically having the fan on high, auto, make it quieter, or turn off the fan completely. In which case, here are your fan output differences in those different modes. And for those of you that are wondering, here are some fan noise tests between these three lights from six feet away so you get an idea of what it sounds like on set. One physical difference between these three Cobb LED lights is the yoke design. The 200 watt and 60 watt have the really cheap yoke design where it's just a spigot on a bottom and it just, you just kind of ratchet it back and forth. And you know, that's fine. But the 300 watt has the yoke I like, which is the one that's more traditional and the light can spin on its own axis. All right, I've covered pretty much everything you need to know about the Cobb LED lights. So let's take a quick look at this little pocket RGB known as the C4. While it is a pocket RGB, so you got your bicolor modes, you got your RGB modes, there is a magnetic back, so you can stick it onto anything magnetic. And in the front, this is really nice and unique because the front 
has lenses over the LED diodes, which allows you to focus the light for more output from this small little pocket RGB. But not only that, if you want to, you can diffuse it and change it into a single source with this little magnetic cap. It does have an internal battery inside, and basically your battery life is looking at approximately two hours. So what's the bottom line here? The bottom line is all these other companies that don't necessarily make lights, they only come out with maybe one 60 watt cob or maybe a small panel to go with it. Not a whole lot of options here. Whereas iFootage out of the get go is really building an ecosystem that filmmakers new and old can invest into. We got three different cob LEDs of varying degrees of power. We have a pocket RGB iFootage has also gone ahead and made their own Bowens light modifiers. And of course you have their smartphone app that does work on a mesh type network. So when it comes down to this, I feel like iFootage is really starting off strong. And I feel like in the future, they're probably gonna make some high powered LED panels to really round out their set. When we talk about the color accuracy of these iFootage lights, scientifically speaking, yes, they are extremely accurate. But when you looked at my practical tests, they basically look the same as all the other brands. And that's simply because all the other brands, including the iFootage, the TLCI score is basically between 96 to 99 out of 100 which it's basically practically perfect. And that's simply because our camera sensors can only see certain colors in a certain range. But as sensors continue to improve, which they do pretty much every year, there's gonna be a day where that TLCI score is gonna be moot and the SSI score is gonna come in and really judge us and show the difference between all the LED lights. And hey guys, that is the end of this video. I hope it has been helpful. And if it has, and you wanna buy one of these lights, I do have some purchase links down below. They are affiliated and should you use it, it does help directly support the channel. And I thank you for that. Otherwise, if you have a question or comment, go ahead and leave it down below. I will get to them as fast as I can. This has been TLDR Filmmaker and I'll see you guys in the next one.